Hi everyone! In this short free video series, I will show how to build tic tac toe with DRIM GUI. Today, we will have a look at the mouse events in DRM GUI. So, let's see how we can get the information when our mouse is clicked and where it was clicked into our app. First, I will do a little bit of explaining how the backups in DRIM GUI work because it's a little bit tricky. And afterwards, we will go into live coding and writing all the functionalities we need that we actually get the mouse clicks. So come along and stay with the right. This picture here shows how the backends in DIM GUI usually are built. So usually you do have four different components and most of them are actually hidden from you. And the first one always being the operating system. So the operating system is what basically gives you all the information about your mouse and your clicks and whatever you're doing, but it needs to be processed by a window manager. And usually the window manager is located in something like a window.c and it can have several different flavors like a low level driver. And in my example, I have chosen GLFW as a low level driver and usually this is a, quite a common choice and if you're new with DRM GUI I will always recommend that you go with uh, GLFW because it's just the most common choice. After uh, the window driver there usually is what DRM GUI calls its backend and this one is the file that is connecting the low level driver which is GLFW with actual calls of IM GUI. So this is then usually located in something like IM GUI implementation GLFW or something. But let's have a look at uh, where it's actually in the repository. So if we go here to the IM GUI repository, then we will find it under the backends. So under the backends, we will have several different low level drivers which are connecting the IM GUI to the window manager that you're using. And here, this is the GLFW backend. This is something that is, uh, let's say, quite common and also fairly uh, well maintained. So how are the calls actually looking like? So GLFW is using the call of GLFW poll events to um, update everything that is about the mouse and the keyboard and maybe gamepad or whatever you're using. And then usually there is somewhere inside a callback. So the, this callback will always be called if your mouse, for instance, gets clicked, if your key, key gets clicked or maybe key gets released or whatever. And it's called in this case, mouse button callback. And it's the IM GUI implementation for GLFW. So you will find this function also here in this backend file. And what is important here is that this is already doing all of the connections for you. So you don't need to uh, forward the signals to dear IM GUI yourself. The backend is already handling that for you. So inside this function, which already exists, there is already the correct way on how to get this information to dear IM GUI. However, if you now want to add your own stuff, because you want to also process the mouse signals and the keyboard signals in your own application, then you need to add an additional callback, which is then forwarding the information not to DIM GUI, but to whatever you are writing yourself. And in this case, you can add an additional callback by using GLFW set mouse button callback and uh, then this will also be called inside the mouse button callback of your backend. So this is basically the design, but let's have a look how it looks in real code. If we, for instance, go to the backend, um, here we do have the implementation of this mouse button callback. And we see here that at the bottom, there is this forwarding. So this is basically um, the, the IO part of the IM GUI. And whenever a button gets pressed, then this is actually forwarded to DIM GUI. And in the top part is your own callback that you can register and your own callback, which is in this case, previous user callback mouse button. Um, this is getting called if there is something registered behind it. 
So the design here is a, pre a little bit uh, questionable, let's say, because uh, yeah, it's it's just um, I I don't think that it's very clear here in the back end. But uh, uh, in order to get here, you can just uh, yeah search for whatever wherever this is being called, and you see that this is actually using then the GLFW functions to set these callbacks. And if you from outside also set this callback, then basically uh, your callback gets shifted into this previous user callback and the callback from uh, the GLFW framework, which is this callback, then actually stays the same. Um, so I don't like this particular design, but uh, in this case it is how it is and I don't want to touch it. So maybe in the future I will, but uh, this is um, how it is currently. The important thing is that you want to register your own callback. You need to call this function with your callback and it's actually also fairly well documented. So if you see here, for instance, the description, um, this is what you need to do. Um, yeah, then let's dive into coding. So the app which I have prepared is called here Tic-Tac-Toe and it's based on AppBase and I have shown how to build app base in another video um, but let's have just a short look at it app base here itself it's basically a class wrapper for the example based on opengl3 you can find this example based on opengl3 also here in this um, in the im gui repository under examples and this is basically this um, OpenGL3 with GLFW, so here GLFW, OpenGL3. It's basically this example, um, just as a class wrapper to, to make it more convenient to use. Um, and this we will now extend with a functionality to dispatch the mouse events that we want to have. Um, I have um, already prepared everything here inside and we will now add the functionality to actually do it. And now we have our callbacks installed in our app. So we see whenever I move the cursor, um, we see that the position gets updated. And if I click the left mouse button and if I click the right mouse button, there is an event for the down press and the release of the button. So always two uh, events for that. Um, and we basically have now installed um, everything that we need. And we see it's working already pretty well. However, one problem remains. So you see, for instance, this is something that I uh, that is already in Dear I am GUI, and this is the dispatch mechanism of Dear I am GUI, which we now need to resolve. Because if I'm over this window, usually I don't want that 
um, the information of the mouse move is updated and um, also sent to my application because only the IM GUI should handle it because this is what is currently in the foreground here. So it should work in this area but it should not work in this area because otherwise I will get wrong signals to my application. And this is also what they write on their homepage. Um, for instance, this, uh, this FAQ, and actually it's really fre frequently asked, how can I tell whether to dispatch mouse, keyboard, DIM, GUI or my application? And here they have even an example code what you need to include in your handler that this works for you. So we will just add it. Now we see we basically have finished the task so when I'm moving my mouse here in the area which belongs to my application the cursor gets updated and if I am over the area which should be handled by dear I am GUI it is handled by dear I am GUI and you see the cursor is not updated whereas here in this area it is so this is already what I wanted to achieve here and already working fine however we still have one problem here remaining and it is like the generality or the reusability of the code. Because right now, um, the callbacks are basically inside here. So they are inside app base, but I really want to fill them here inside my application itself. Because for the app base, it can be uh, that somebody else wants to use it in a different way. So we need to get rid of those callbacks here and somehow put them in the implementation by the user. The main problem that we have here is that this function here, the set mouse button callback, actually needs a free function. So this is a function which cannot belong to a class or it, has, uh, it needs to be at least static. So in order to fix it, what we will do is that um, we cannot use here, uh, uh, or we could potentially use a, a virtual function call. Um, but what we will do is that we will just make this app base here um, as a CRTP pattern and add a template parameter and then call the correct function based on the derived type. Um, that way we can make it more general and shift the implementation of our handlers here inside our normal application and make it a little bit more general. So let's go. We see the functionality here is the same as before. So here the dispatch is uh, not to our application. Here the dispatch is to our application. And we have moved the implementation of the callbacks out of the base app into the application that we want to implement. So it's nicely general and we can now start filling this with something that we actually want to use. But this is then in another video and um, hit subscribe if you're also interested in that. Um, other than that, start up your machines and as always, enjoy coding.